Hi all and welcome to the first ever virtual Share to Buy Home Show. Today our topic is why we think right now is the right time to buy. The session will be run by myself, my colleague Lawrence and guest speaker Helen from Clark Marshall Associates. So what are we going to cover today? We're going to talk about Peabody, overview of products, why buy now, preparing to buy, trends, buying through lockdown and buyer stories. So who are Peabody? Peabody is a housing provider who have been around for over 150 years in um, and operating in London and the South East. We manage over 66,000 homes and deliver service to 133 residents. We deliver 3,300 homes each year as a minimum. And what makes Peabody special is we plough profits plow our profits back into affordable housing and local communities. We make customers, we, we make sure customers are looked after during and after their purchase of their home. So for all those lucky people that are logged on today, uh, we're offering 1,500 worth of enticing gifts uh, if you purchase your dream home in the next month or before the 28th of August. For more information on this, browse our Peabody virtual booth and book a private chat with our friendly team today. Okay, I'm here to tell you a bit more about our housing products and buying products. So first of all, what is shared ownership? Well, shared ownership is known as part buy, part rent also. And it's government-backed affordable scheme to help you get your foot on the property ladder. The advantage of it is that you require a smaller deposit and you don't have to have massively high incomes to buy your first home, which is particularly helpful when you're buying in London. You can initially buy a share from between 25 and 75 percent and pay rent for the remaining share that's left. You can buy further shares and this is known as staircasing, at which point you can staircase up to 100 percent, which would make you the outright owner of your home. You typically need to put down, and this is at the moment, um, a 10 percent deposit but only on your share rather than the total value of your home. So who's eligible for shared ownership? Well, you've got to be over 18 and your annual household income if buying in London must be less than 90,000, 80,000 if you live outside of London. You'll normally be a first time buyer or you'll be in the process of selling your own home. You must be able to show that you are not in rent or mortgage arrears and you must be able to demonstrate that you have a good credit history and can afford the costs and regular payments involved in buying a home. There's another way of buying a property as well. That's called Help to Buy. Now, Help to Buy is a scheme backed by the government and it's an initiative designed to help people get on the property ladder who may not have a large deposit. So in some ways similar to shared ownership. You'll get an equity loan from the government of up to 40% of the property purchase price that's inside London if you live outside London, they'll loan you up to 20% of the property price. And the help to buy is only available on new built homes up to the value of 600,000 in London and up to 400,000 outside of London. Typically, this is an example of how help to buy works within London. So the property value is 400,000. The deposit you'll have to find is 5% of that, which is 20,000. The government's 40% loan will be 160,000 and you'll need to find a mortgage of 220,000 to buy. That's 55% of the value of the property. You'll have to start paying back the government loan in five years. Um, and it's a very low interest rate at the moment. If you want to know a bit more than that, then I suggest that you speak to one of our IFAs and Clark Marshall will probably be a good place to start. Outside London, very much the same. Example house is worth 200,000. Again, a 5% deposit. Remember, outside of London, they'll only lend you 20%. So you'd be looking at 10K as your deposit, 40K is the government loan, and you'd be looking at a 75% mortgage from, from a mortgage lender of 150,000. But why buy now? Well, there are many obvious things, and quite a lot of it's been in the news recently. Um, we're having a bit of a stamp duty holiday at the moment. The government said from the 8th of July this year that nobody would have to pay stamp duty on purchases until the 31st of March 2021. This is fantastic news. It means that buying a property has suddenly become a lot more affordable up front. Banks and lenders are offering incredibly low interest rates at the moment. 
there's some of them are because of lockdown are looking at slightly larger deposits if you go ahead and purchase but it's still a very attractive time to buy and it's the perfect time to consider what you would want from your home following lockdown you might be looking for outdoor space work-life balance suitable space for working from home so come and look at the homes available across london with peabody in the southeast um, because we have got many home ownership options available stamp duty holiday basically stamp duty is stamp duty land tax and it's a tax payable on all property transactions it's usually the largest upfront cost you associate that you associate with buying a house so previously up until july the 8th with the first 125,000 of any property you were buying there was no stamp duty and then from over 125 to 250,000 you were paying two percent above 250,000 to 925,000 you're paying five percent and from 925,000 to 1.5 million, those of you that are lucky enough to buy at that level, you are paying 10% stamp duty. The new rates quite clearly are beneficial to most first time buyers. <clears throat> so for any purchase up to 500,000, you will not be paying any stamp duty at all. Um, for over 500,000 to 925, you'd be paying 5%. From 925 to 1.5 million, 10%. The really lucky amongst you above 1.5 million you've been paying 12 percent stamp duty on any purchase <clears throat> so if you're buying at 350,000 you'll pay nothing so you'll actually save yourself 7,500 at the beginning of the purchase if you're paying 600,000 stamp duty now is 5,000 pounds that's five percent on the hundred thousand above 500,000 that you're spending so you'll be saving yourself £15,000 on the purchase. And if you're buying at over £1 million, guess what? You'll be saving £15,000 again. I'm here to give you some tips on how to prepare for buying your first home. So the first thing, saving <clears> your <throat> When you buy your home, whether it be shared ownership, help to buy or outright sale, you will do so with a combination of a mortgage and a deposit. Now this deposit can come from various sources. It could be your own personal savings that you've built up over a period of time. You will need to be able to produce at least three month history of your savings to show how you achieve the total. Sometimes lenders and <laughs> history. When saving, make sure the account is in your name and do not opt to pass the money to a member of your family to save on your behalf. Once you give the funds to them, the money legally is no longer yours and you will not therefore be counted as your own savings. Do not save the money in accounts in the name of your children. Again, technically, you have given the money to them, and as they are not adults, they may not be able, they are not able to give this back to you. You may inherit monies which you use as your deposit. You will need to evidence the source of these funds, so make sure you keep any legal correspondence that confirms the amount of the inheritance and the date you received it. You can then produce these with your bank statement. Gifted deposits. The majority of mortgage lenders will accept gifted deposits from close family members, including parents, grandparents and siblings. The person providing you with the gift will have to sign a letter confirming they are gifting you the funds and will not take a financial interest in the property. If your deposit is coming from outside of the EU, from either your own savings or a gift, additional checks will be required to comply with UK money laundering. So be prepared to find, provide further documents to provide, prove, prove the original source. Now checking your credit report. Your credit report contains information about any credit cards, loans or finance agreements that you have and shows a history of how you maintain these. It will show if you've exceeded your credit card limit, if you've made a late payment or defaulted on a credit agreement. It will also show if you have any counterfeit judgments registered against you. Any negative entries will have an impact on your ability to apply for a mortgage, all at varying degrees. To ensure your report is in good shape, Make sure you pay all your commitments on time, no matter how small. Whether your monthly payment is £5 or £500, if it is not paid on time, it will register as a late payment. Never take out a loan or finance agreement for a family member or a friend to help them out if they cannot get credit. Even if they pay the debt each month, because it is registered in your name, it will be taken into account and will reduce the amount you're able to borrow. Lenders don't like to see payday loans being used, so please don't apply for any of these. It's a good idea as well to close any accounts that you do not intend to use in the future. Now, your current account, cleaning up your current account. This account demonstrates how you manage your finances on a daily basis. If you have an overdraft limit, make sure you never exceed it. Ideally, don't use it at all. 
if you make use of your overdraft facility, do ensure that part of the month your account is in credit and you're not constantly overdrawn. Make sure the address on your bank statement is where you actually live and is not an old address or your parents' address. Make sure your name is spelt correctly. And despite the rumours, lenders are not at all concerned about the amount you spend on Deliveroo, but they are concerned if they see high numbers of gambling transactions on your statements. Now here's a, a quick fix. Make sure you're on the electoral roll. Checking the electoral roll is a way for mortgage lenders to establish and evidence your address history. When applying for a mortgage, you will need to evidence your address history for the last three years. Each time you move, make sure you re-register at your new address. And if you're not registered currently, then make that your priority. Ensuring your documents are in order. Now, this is something you can check now and rectify immediately. Do not wait until you're ready to buy a home. Check your documents now and make any necessary changes today. You will need to prove your identity when applying for your mortgage. So check your passport and your driving license. They must show accurate information and be in date and not expired. A photo driving license must show your current address. Ensure all your bank accounts show your statement, your name exactly as on your ID documents. If there are middle names on your passport, these should be on all your documents. Use your full names on official documents. Don't use abbreviations. Variations of name on different pieces of paperwork cause concern for the mortgage lenders as they could be a sign of potential fraud. Make sure your employer has your current address, so if this shows on your payslip and P60, it matches your rest of your documents. As with your bank statements, make sure your name on your payslip is the same format as your name on your ID document. Now, understanding hidden costs. This is just to remind you that when planning your first purchase, make sure you save more than the deposit monies. After all, you will incur other costs, such as legal fees, stamp duty, valuations, survey fees, mortgage fees, and furniture for your new home and van hire and removals. So then if we move on to the next one, and we can look at the benefits of using a mortgage expert. Now the role of a broker is so much more than finding you the best mortgage deal. They are there to explain the process to you, assist you right through to the day that you get the keys and indeed beyond. When you want to review your mortgage or move property as your life progresses, they will still be there to continue to help you. When you visit a lender direct, the majority can now only provide you with information so that you can make an informed choice. A mortgage broker can talk to you, discuss all options, advise you and make a recommendation for the mortgage that is most appropriate for you. All mortgage lenders have different criteria covering different points. So this is all about understanding the different types of mortgages. This is whether they accept shared ownership or help to buy, how they calculate affordability and how, work out how much they will lend you what history they require for your employment or your self-employment, what types of deposit they accept, what property they accept. Some lenders, for example, will restrict the number of stories in a building. By using a mortgage broker, they will be able to consider all lenders and recommend the one that best suits your needs and that of the property you're buying. So assessing your affordability, all lenders have different ways in calculating how much they are prepared to lend you. The factors that they take into account include your age, your income, your debt, your deposit, and the number of financial dependents. Your mortgage broker will be able to advise which lenders enable you to maximise your ability to borrow while still ensuring you are comfortable with the monthly payments. Be aware of all the fees that you will pay. Now, some mortgages do come with arrangement fees. These can commonly vary between £299 and £1,499 and can indeed be higher. The benefits of paying these fees is that you usually obtain a lower interest rate in return. However, it is not always the most cost effective option and can work out to be more expensive overall. The lowest rate is not always the cheapest option. Your broker can make these calculations to ensure that they only recommend a rate with a fee if it is going to save you money. When you purchase with a mortgage, the lender will always carry out a mortgage valuation to ensure they're happy to lend on that particular property and that they agree it's worth the money. This may involve a visit to the property or it may be automated. Many lenders now provide these for free, however some will make a charge. If you are not buying a new property, then it is advisable to obtain a more detailed survey on the property to ensure there are no potential problems that could cost you money after completion. Your broker will be able to advise you and assist you in finding a suitably qualified surveyor to do this. 
Now, learning about the different rates, mortgages can be on fixed rates, tracker rates, discounted rates, they can be offset, they can be payment, they can be interest only. This industry is full of jargon. Your mortgage broker will be able to explain the differences, advise you of all the options, and by talking to you, able to recommend the one that will work the best for you. And finally on this slide, how to understand how to choose a lender. There are many mortgages in the UK. When buying your first home or even your second or third, it's not feasible to have a meeting with everyone. Even if you could, by the time this had taken place, the likelihood is that many of the rates discussed would have changed. In addition, brokers sometimes have access to exclusive deals that are not even offered directly by the lender. Having a meeting with a broker has never been easier. Video interviews have made this process far more flexible. Your broker will be able to consider many lenders in one go and establish which is right for you. And your broker will offer you a direct contact for the whole transaction and be able to be available for hours longer than nine to five. If you're purchasing via a scheme such as shared ownership, if you use a specialist broker, they will ensure the lender chosen is accepted by the scheme and the housing association, as well as ensuring that they meet your requirements. How can they do this? Well, by all the points I've covered, by understanding your personal circumstances, your full financial position, and the property you are considering, they will be able to recommend how you proceed and with which lender. Buying a property can be stressful, but if you plan ahead and use an expert, much of that stress can be removed. That's great. Thank you so much, Helen. That was really useful information. Um, great. So moving on. This allowed me to. There we go. <laughs> Um, great. So trends. Um, so during this very unusual time, um, Rightmove have done some studies and they actually claim that 39% of their buyers have changed their priorities when it comes to house hunting. The portal has reported an increase of demand for gardens, larger homes, access to parks and more rural locations. And this was based on a survey of 4,000 home movers. And the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors asked agents to predict the desirability of property features over the next two years. And the survey showed that 81% noted an increased demand for properties with garden or balconies, plus 74% feel that there will be a shift towards homes near green spaces. 58% feel the demand for properties in higher urban areas will fall and the a majority expect no change in desirability for homes near transport hubs. So yeah, during this unusual time, our teams have been working hard um, and we've booked um, over the time 1,549 online viewings. Um, and, we've and from that, we've taken 233 reservations as we have over 700 homes available across 28, uh, 28 developments. We're also offering £99 reservation fee, fully refundable after until physical viewings. Um, we're also making some of our show homes uh, more accessible um, and more safe during these times. So we're implementing safety measures, including sanitised stations, providing masks and floor markers to help keep social distancing. Um, so customers will have the option to view physically or virtually based on their needs. So during lockdown, we reached out to some of our buyers to hear their experiences. Um, so this is Owen. He, uh, he's purchased a flat at the gallery in Camberwell. And during lockdown, he's made his way through an Ontogelly cookbook in the evenings. And his top tip from working from home is dress up as if he was going into the office to give himself a little structure. Another one of our buyers is uh, Josephine, and she's a shared owner at Motion at Lee Bridge. Josephine previously lived in a flat share in Hackney, but wanted her own space. Now she's living life in Motion in her one bedroom apartment. Josephine initially found her home search stressful, but soon discovered Peabody. And she quotes, Peabody helped me every step of the way. And so it was a huge weight off my shoulders. I found the website insightful and informative. I have, I also have clients and friends that live at Motion and even have recruited some new neighbours myself due to the chance to buy here with Peabody. 
Italian-born Louisa successfully moved into her new home at Stonely Gardens 14 days into the UK lockdown and she explains how she knew it was the perfect home for her and her two teenage sons. Louisa says, using shared ownership scheme with Peabody, I purchased a three-bedroom townhouse. I have seen many other properties before viewing this house. The moment I set foot inside, I knew it was the one and put my offer in on the same day. The most valuable space at home during lockdown has been the kitchen and the living room. Being Italian, we love cooking. I feel priv privileged after years of sacrifice to live in this beautiful, comfortable, cozy and homely house. And finally, meet Rita. <laughs> There she is, <laughs> who bought at Collindale Gardens. She explains how her life has been since UK lockdown and says, I'm a very positive person and you have to keep a positive attitude at uncertain times like this. I received the keys to my property the same weekend as lockdown was announced. So I was very lucky. I'm working on my new home at the moment and I actually am really enjoying it. I have been able to decorate already, something I may not have been able to do so quickly otherwise. Rita's home buying journey actually began at one of the London home shows where she spoke to our sales team. So that's all from us today. Thank you so much for listening. To stay up to date with all our latest properties, please visit peabodysales.co.uk or follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook or Twitter or join us in our virtual booth uh, today. Thank you.